OK, so a little review here. Spinoza says that the more we recognize that all events are inevitable consequences, that everything was meant to be, or inevitably the cause and conditions came together, so the result became inevitable, the less we will be carried away by our emotions. The mind has a greater capacity for emotion insofar as it perceives everything as inevitable or it is less affected by emotions. It is wisdom that recognizes the inevitable, not comfort that sounds good, that extinguishes dissatisfaction and resentment and provides supreme peace of mind. Self-contentment may arise from reason and this contentment, when it arises from reason, is the highest that can exist, Ethica. Yeah, I think yesterday someone was saying they want to have more satisfaction in life. Yeah, they want to have, so the highest level of contentment exists. It's not bad to feel that I want to have more fulfillment in life, but we need to strive and aim for it and move in that direction, it's possible, it exists. When a person is made aware that he creates his own fate and all he reaps is what he plants, resentment toward others and the environment does not arise. Chapter 2.2. Is there no divine justice in the world? Confucius and Sima Xian both cried over the unreasonableness of the world. Why do so many people end up in an unfortunate life event, even if, if they live diligently? Lao Tzu expressed the principle of good deeds make you happy and bad deeds make you unhappy. As follows, the principle of the world never singles anyone out for special treatment. It is always on the side of the good. In reality, however, there are many cases of righteous people being killed easily and thugs living out their natural lives without being brought to justice. It is hard to believe that good people will always be happy and bad people will always be unhappy, isn't it? 2,000 years ago, the Chinese historian Sima Xian was one such person. Among the 3,000 disciples of Confucius, Yan Hui was a brilliant student who knew 10 things when he heard one and was highly trusted by his teacher and was considered to be his successor. However, because of lack of food, he died early in life. At the death of Yan Hui, Confucius broke down crying, Ah, oh, the heaven has destroyed my life. However, a great bandit of the same period named the robber Ji, who had thousands of men working for him, committed all kinds of evil acts day after day, including murder, arson, and robbery, but died peacefully on tatami mats. Sima Qian could not help but wonder about the history in which the bad people flourished and the good people perished. Is there no divine justice in the world? This is the question that came from Sima Qian's own life. Li Ling, a close friend of Sima Qian, led an army into the foreign lands, but surrendered after a good fight. Hearing this, Emperor Wu was furious and ordered the execution of Li Ling's mother, wife, children, and their families. While all his subjects made themselves agreeable to the Wu Emperor, only Sima Xion defended Li Ling and infuriated the Emperor, and the death penalty was extended to him as well. He would have been forgiven if he paid a fine, but it was a staggering amount of money for him and he had no relatives to rely on. Another way to escape death was to undergo castration. In China, where the greatest filial duty was to leave descendants and make offerings to ancestors, there was no greater disgrace. However, Sima Xiong lived up to his father's legacy 
and completed his history book. It must have been to save those who, like himself, were innocent but died unrewarded, at least by leaving their names behind for posterity. From a moral standpoint, good people deserve to be blessed and bad people deserve to be punished. But in reality, the opposite is often the case. It was the Western philosopher Plato who sensed this contradiction with his whole being and devoted himself to its resolution. There are plenty of people who lived earnestly but ended up living an unfortunate life. Confucius and Sima Xion both cried over the unreasonableness of the world. Okay, very good to hear. Yeah, so I think it's very important to ponder about the happenings in the world or in our own lives to contemplate how mysterious it is when fate is unfolded. Yeah, we don't expect it at all that yeah, bad things happen to good people, but in reality it can happen and vice versa. So first we acknowledge our ignorance uh, of the fate, how mysterious it is. It totally contradicts our expectations in many cases. So to have that humble mind is important. Yeah, like we talked about it a lot in the Purpose and Meaning Lab uh, hosted by Rick yesterday. We need to have that humility to open up the mind to receive that knowledge and wisdom. And I think, um, yeah, most people give up pursuing it because they think it's so chaotic. Like they, they don't discover the rule or the principle of law of cause and effect that governs our fate. So scientists have progressed a lot uh, finding patterns about cause and effect in the, in the world. But when it comes to our life, our fate, our fortune or future, so I think because people are so much in the dark, so they think, oh, things happen just randomly. And so more and more people just live for the pleasure of the moment. They don't care if they plant bad seeds in the process because they don't see that bad seeds, how those bad seeds bring them bad effects. And uh, also they don't take good seeds seriously because they conclude a lot of people who planted good seeds, they didn't get the good effects within the time frame they are making their evaluation. In Buddhism, the time frame is the three worlds, past world before we were born, present world from birth to death, and the future world after we die. We don't have the wisdom to know what seeds will sprout at what time, and each seed has a different nature. So it's best if we learn the Dharma and place our trust in the law of cause and effect and generate as much goodness as we can. Yeah, so that's uh, our daily life, the practice of six parameters. So good job, everyone, for being here practicing together. We're going to have, I think we have the Alchemist Book Club at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Advanced Happiness Lab. It's, uh, yeah, uh, by reservation. And uh, yeah, if you haven't completed the webinar from last week, we do that too, 6, 10 p.m. on Zoom. So good job and have a beautiful Saturday. Bye.